Thinking of buying a house in Atlanta, Georgia? Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Ben Dings, and I am your licensed Atlanta real estate expert. Stick around because we're going to a new construction community in Fayetteville, Georgia, filling up with huge luxury homes that blew me away. In this video, you'll be going on a ride with me through the neighborhood, and then I'm taking you inside two amazing floor plans that this community has to offer. But that's not all, because while we're inside these homes, I'm also going to tell you the first five things you need to do and why when buying a home to ensure you have a workable plan and a smooth move. But first, I come out with new videos every single week featuring exclusive Atlanta community tours and what it's like living in Atlanta, Georgia and the suburbs as well. So if it's your first time to this video or to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss a thing. I get phone calls and text messages every single day from people moving here and relocating here, and I absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about moving anywhere in Atlanta, Georgia, or the surrounding areas, make sure that you give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. Days, nights, weekends, whenever, because I'm your Atlanta real estate agent. Let's go. Today, guys, we are at Riverbend Overlook by DRB in Fayetteville, Georgia. This is in the Fayetteville County School District, uh, it's Inman Elementary, Bennett's Middle School, and Fayette County High School Districts. Um, and right now in this community, homes are starting just over the 570s. Uh, homes are ranging from 3,500 square feet to just over 4,000 square feet. You've got four bedroom to five bedroom plans with three and a half all the way up to four and a half bathrooms. So these are some huge homes. Um, I can't wait to show you the first home, especially it is a home that I, wow, especially while I was editing the video and going back in, going back through it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is probably the perfect home for me, the, the dream home. There's no such thing as a perfect home, but this is as close to a perfect home as it can get. There are a few things that I would consider a compromise, but overall, oh my gosh, it was a beautiful home. Um, there is an HOA in this community. It's only $500 a year and that's mainly for common area maintenance and then also the HOA management fee. Um, but for the price of these homes in the 500s, $500 a year is, uh, is a great price considering where I've heard in some other states and some other areas, you're talking thousands of dollars a year. So um, it's mainly to, to upkeep the neighborhood, to keep the values of the homes up. Um, and that's, that's their main job. As you can see, uh, not so much right here because we're looking at some trees, but uh, you can see off to the distance, these homes are spaced apart really well. They're not close together at all. And that is someone that's looking for a yard, looking for a big house and a big yard. This is, this is it guys. Um, like I said, this is in Fayette County. Um, it's right down the road from the Fayette County, Clayton County line, but it is in Fayette County. Uh, Fayette County, uh, fun fact, used to be one of the uh, richest cities or city counties per capita in the state of Georgia. You had Fayetteville, which there was a ton of affluent people that lived there. You have Peachtree City that has a ton of affluent people that live there as well. Um, that's why the prices in Fayette County historically for a long time, a lot longer than some other parts of Georgia that are now growing, um, the prices have been higher than average in other parts, but you see what you get here. You get huge homes. They're huge. Uh, I can't wait till we get inside and you can see, um, the home that one day that I will have, uh, <laughs> or something very similar, because like I said, it, it, it checks so many boxes for me. It's a, it's a great home. Um, it's, it's in a great neighborhood. Um, but like I said, yeah, Fayetteville has had a ton of people here for a long time. Um, Evander Holyfield used to have a huge mansion uh, that is now owned by a uh, uh, oh, hip hop artist, uh, record producer, record executive, uh, uh, Rick Ross. So now he owns it. He's got the big gates that have the RR on it uh, with the hedges that are shaped like drafts. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But, uh, but yeah, there, there are a ton of people. Uh, Zach Brown from the Zach Brown Band has connections in uh, Fayetteville. Uh, Tyler Perry has connections in Fayetteville. Trillis Studios, the movie studios where they film a lot of movies. You've got Marvel movies, 
uh, which are some of the bigger ones. Um, but it's a major studio. There's a ton of ton of big name box office movies that are being filmed at Trillith Studios. Um, so yeah, Google it, Trillith, and you will see um, how many people are, are filming movies out there now. But this is this was a great neighborhood. I really was impressed by everything by it. Uh, but yeah, today we are going to talk not only about these homes, we're also going to talk about the first five steps to buying a home. And those first five steps do not even include writing a contract, going under contract, any of that. This is everything that you do just to go see a home. Uh, it's not that bad. I kind of have it drawn out step by step because I get phone calls every day. I talk to people every day about, all right, uh, I've started looking at homes. I just don't know what to do. So uh, that's the main objective of today's video is to set you up for success, to get you a workable plan for a one smooth move to get you into your new home. Uh, and we'll go into more detail into that uh, once we get into the first house, but I just like to talk about what we're getting into and why it's important because so many people don't start at step one. They start at step three normally or step four um and that's that's part of the process and i know you're excited but to make sure that we don't get your hopes up and this or that or create an, a plan that's not workable we need to start at step one and i will go over that with you when we get inside the homes but yeah that's that's pretty much the main thing we're pretty much through this neighborhood now um this is actually the last house that's the second home that we'll go into there um, and you see it even has a fence in it. But here's the first house. It is the model home. It's the Rosemary II. Um, it's just over uh, it's just over 3,800 square foot. It's a five bedroom, four and a half bath plan. It's got a three car garage. Uh, the garage is used as the sales office right now, so we won't go see the garage. We'll see the garage in the next home, in the second home, but not the first one, so you can see how it works. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a, this one right here literally is my dream home. Like, look at this. You have a grand two-story foyer. You've got a great, impressive entrance. You've got your dining room to the side. And what do we have over here? We have an office. I need an office with this plan. It is a five-bedroom plan, but you've also got an office. So you don't need to use a bedroom as an office. You know, I got to make sure that I'm clean because it is at the front of the house. It's presented to where if people come over, they'll see it. So I do need to keep it organized. That's something that I got to work on sometimes. Sometimes I'm flying by the seat of my pants because I got so much going on, but I have plenty of tools to keep me organized, plenty of uh, coordinators, assistants, everyone to keep me organized to where I can help everyone uh, and give everyone the service that they deserve. But yeah, keep looking at this home. I really like it. It's got an in-law suite downstairs on the main level. Uh, DRB does do the option to where you can get a stand-up shower instead of the, the tub shower combo that they did. So that's great. You can have your in-laws living downstairs. There's a walk-in closet too. So they wouldn't have to go up and down sta stairs if they're elderly or if you have a roommate situation to where they could be there. Look how grand this is, how open it is. I'm just trying to hit the top the top points while we while I talk about the main thing of the steps of buying a home because it's so important. Um, I want to have make sure I want to make sure that I have enough time for that. The upstairs, well, I'll stop talking about everything when I get upstairs. Um, but anyway, so the first step in buying a home, go ahead and cringe all you want, but it's it's true or else it wouldn't be there. The first step to buying a home is hiring an agent. A full time agent is going to get you a lot further than a part time agent. An agent that is that has, is a top producer is going to get you a lot more than an agent that is scrounging by the skin of their teeth to, to put food on the table. Their concern at that point is more so getting a deal closed than taking care of you and protecting you sometimes. The, and I'm all of those things. I'm a full-time agent. I'm a top producer. I'm here to take care of you. I have knowledge about the market. I, I've talked about it in previous videos to where I know what's going on with the market. Here, check this out. You've got a butler's pantry. 
between the kitchen and the dining room, which is a great little storage area. It's a great setup area for Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. And boom, you've got a big old pantry that I would be adding a lot more shelving in there to make it a lot more usable. Um, but yeah, you want an agent that can give you the right tools. Uh, one of those tools in my case is my website. I've talked about it a lot. I've told you to call me. I've had people call me and I've set them up. Now I feel that it's time to debut it to everyone. It's if you've gone to my channel page, you've seen it in my banner, go to www.ben.searchlikeabroker.com. I'll put it below www.ben.searchlikeabroker.com. Why do we use this site? Why do I recommend this site over places like Zillow, Realtor.com, all those places? Because I don't sell your information like they do. If you hit request but uh, request info on Realtor or Zillow or whatever, first off, you think you're getting the listing agent. You're not in most cases. You're getting agents that pay for those leads. And a lot of times they're not exclusive leads. Uh, we, we do pay for Realtor leads. And I know this for a fact that even though we pay for exclusive leads, um, I still get calls from people. I still call people and they'll tell me, you are the 15th person that's called me about this property. It happens all the time. Don't be one of those people that falls into that trap where you hit the button and then you get called from everyone and their mom about wanting to sell you real estate. You go to www.ben, make sure you put in Ben, dot searchlikeabroker.com. You will get a phone call from me or my assistant and that is it. No one else, whenever you hit request info, I'll reach out to you with a phone call or a text message, whichever you prefer or an email, and we'll set it up and we'll go see it. Not everyone, not every agent in the world, that is the best thing about it. You can search in peace because if you have hit the button, um, you've, you, you know exactly the trauma and I'm bringing up the PTSD right now, just talking about it. So go to my website, register on there, um, if you want, you can call me. I'll set you up on it. We'll have a conversation. We'll talk about what you're looking for. I'll set you up on a search uh, and we'll get you taken care of and we'll make sure that you get the top service that you deserve when buying a home. Um, but when you use a top agent, you can get tools like that. You can get the experience uh, to where, like I said before, you get uh, in previous videos, I know what each little part of the market is feeling. I know which parts of the market where you can ask for in some cases that like right now, $15,000 in closing costs for other cases where we have to write and offer over asking, but I have ways around that as well. If we have to, if we get into a multiple offer situation, I have ways to write the best offer, but still protect you to where you're not paying 15, $20,000 over the next guy and still winning offers. And that's what matters. You know, you get into those situations, if you're using a listing agent or if you're using an agent that isn't experienced, you can get into trouble. You can get into the case of, I really want this home, I'll bid $20,000 over asking. Well, turns out you could only spend 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 over asking and gotten it. So I put things in place and we can talk about that more over the phone uh, to end in person or zoom call, however you want to talk. And we can talk about that, how to get you the house that you want and save you the most money that you want, because that's, that's why you hire an agent. Um, if you, if you wanted to spend, uh, whatever you wanted to, if you didn't need to negotiate, then you wouldn't need an agent, but I'm here to help you, to protect you, to save you money. So that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I'm going to do for you. Okay. So. Now that we've got step one out of the way, which is hiring an agent, which is me, uh, step two, it, this is the creating your budget. And there's only one true way to create your budget. You can go online to all the budget calculators, mortgage calculators that you want, but the only true way to get a true budget is by calling and getting pre-approved uh, through a, a lender. That doesn't mean that you have to use that lender, especially if we're going new construction. A lot of times you can save on closing costs by going with the builder's preferred lender. But if you get pre-approved, you will know, have a good idea of your budget. And if we need to pivot and use the builder's lender, we can do that. 
And now some folks will uh, argue and say, uh, the builder may, there's fees that you pay, so the rate is actually higher, even though they tell me the interest rate's lower, the fees make it to where my monthly mortgage is the same, or 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks more. Well, that's where we get into this whole idea of what's better for you. Do you mind spending an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks a month or whatever it is, maybe nothing, maybe still saving money, um, and, but then you turn around and not have to pay ten, fifteen thousand dollars in closing costs. So that's that's the without getting out too much into it, that's why getting pre-approved helps because you can have more than one opinion on where you can go with rates. Because I've had people go both ways. Um, and who can get you set up with a good lender that can make sure that you're taken care of, that you're not just a number? This guy right here, me. So call me again and I will hook you up with some great preferred lenders. Before we keep going, this is the owner suite that I absolutely love. Look at that, you've got a great area for your bed and you also have a, a sitting room that's even kind of divided off a little bit. So I just saw this and I just imagined me and my wife love to just relax a little bit, watch a little TV, watch a little bit of YouTube. And at night after my daughter goes to bed, Instead of watching in the living room, we could literally have our setup right there in the bedroom, in the little sitting room and just relax because I don't know about you, but there are some nights where we're just sitting there and we're sitting there for a little bit longer than we wanted to just because we're like, oh, I don't want to get up. I'm too tired. We'd literally be in the bedroom already. I love it. And it's it's not some tiny little rink-a-dink sitting area. That's a, that's a straight up living room right there in your bedroom. Um, I loved it. I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And when I saw it, I was like, yes, yes, please sign me up right here. Um, I love hanging out uh, in the living room, but also to that great little setup. You had the little loft area for my daughter could use, uh, but this would be a great little setup for me. You've got the hers and hers closets again set up and they're huge closets too. Uh, my wife would definitely say challenge accepted to this one as well. This is the, the wife. I showed her this one while I was editing and the wife approved for sure. I would get this one. This one's slightly smaller. I'd probably get one side of it while she took over the other two sides of that one and the full other closet. Uh, but yeah, I really love this house. Um, anyway, back to uh, getting step two, which is being pre-approved. So um, the, the main thing is, is you want to make sure not only you get pre-approved to find out your top budget, but then also too, you can build a relationship with the lender. Uh, and like I said, I have multiple ones, depending on how our conversation goes, depending on your situation, I can match you with the best one that I have, which I think would match best with your personality. You can choose whoever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and suggest who I think would work best in your specific situation. And uh, you can also tell them, uh, I, I appreciate you giving me this, um, but what's my monthly payment going to be? And how much am I approved for if I want this to be my monthly payment? Because that is the more important question. Not how much are you able to spend, but how much can you safely spend a month? Um, you don't, I tell folks, you don't want to live off of ramen and beanie weenies every day uh, for the rest of your life or the next 30 years while you're paying off this mortgage. So let's find that healthy balance between how much home that you want and how much you can afford per month because those two things will go hand in hand and we'll get into more of that later in the next steps but the first step is hire an agent remember www.ben.searchlikeabroker.com and then when we have our discussion i will send over my list of preferred lenders and i'll get you taken care of that way um, yes i understand that you have a relationship with your bank or whoever a lot of credit unions are great, uh, not knocking anyone. I've had some bad experiences with buyers and you can use whoever you want. I just share my experiences. I've had some bad experiences with certain banks. I won't name who, but I've had bad experiences with some banks to where they don't pre-approve you, they pre-qualify you. And what that means is, is you fill out a questionnaire and then they give you a pre-approval letter. With pre-approval, or they don't, they give you a pre-qualification letter, not a pre-approval, but with a pre-approval letter, you submit your documents. 
which I know is tedious. You know, you don't want to be sharing your information to people. I understand. But the reason that you do that is so you can make sure that you don't run into any hiccups along the way. And if you do have some things that might cause a speed bump here and there, then you, by you submitting the docs, especially with my preferred lenders, they'll know what challenges will lie ahead and we'll be able to prepare for that ahead of time and not two days before closing, potentially risking you losing the house. All right, so here's the second home. This is a three car garage version on the outside of the Rainier home. And this was in Saddle Ridge in Sonoya, this exact same floor plan. And I'll be honest, you're gonna see both. You're, you saw the outside of the one here, but here you, you're seeing the one from Sonoya because that's actually a garage. That room in the one here in Fayetteville is a garage, but I have gotten so busy. I'm gonna tell you right now that I want, I already had this home. There was only a few changes. We're gonna go into the garage. That's a three car and you'll see the differences, but I just needed to save a little bit of time guys. And I'm sorry, but it's still a great home. Hopefully you don't get too mad at me. You still get to see the floor plan. Just imagine that one little spot over there as a garage, a wall, instead of a, a, an extra dining room. But this is the Rainier. It's uh, just under 3,800 square foot. It's a four bedroom, three and a half, plan, uh, three and a half bath plan um, with a three car garage. It's a great home. The closet, instead of it being there that we just saw, it's to the right. Um, but you'll see the backyard, you'll see the garage. Everything else is the same layout, just a few different choices here and there, but it's the same plan. All right, so now that we've got you hooked up with an agent, now that we've got you hooked up with a lender, those are the two major things. Those are the two big steps. Now the more fun stuff starts to happen, which is step number three, and that is determine your needs, your wants, and your deal breakers. Um, a need is pretty simple, the bare minimum. What do you need? Um, if you've got four kids, then you probably need a four bedroom house or a three bedroom house. Uh, but you at least need that, I'm sure, because you can probably put two in the same room. Um, it, you know, do you need a backyard? Do you need a room on the main level for, uh, as an in-law suite for someone that can't go up the stairs? Are you not able to go up the stairs? Do you need to have the owner suite on the main level? All those things are needs. Wants are extras. Open floor plan, for example, is, is a want. Um, it, like in this case here, where you'll see that little door right there ne uh, next to where the washer and dryer go, that leads into the owner suite closet. So here we are in the garage, the three car garage version. That's a want to have access to the laundry room from the uh, owner suite uh, closet. That's, that's a want. Other wants could include a three car garage, uh, whatever. And then a deal breaker is, is a want, but also it's a want that you have to have to where it's like, Ben, I'm not even getting out of the car if this isn't there or if this is there. A deal breaker can be uh, a garage. If the home doesn't have a garage, that can be a deal breaker. It can, have every, it can check every other box, but it has to have a garage. And if it doesn't, I'm out. Um, I hear that one a lot. Um, a, a yard. I hear that. I don't hear that. I hear it both ways. I don't want a yard. I do want a yard. It's so funny. Uh, the, the young couples that are that are getting their first house, the, the guy's always excited about cutting the grass for the first time of how he's how his dad just got him a lawnmower or a weed eater or something. And uh, and then he cuts the grass the first time and uh, he he regrets it. He regrets it completely. He's like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? uh it, it's pretty funny i got you know share, sharing stories uh i've got one guy uh he was all excited about it and the next year i was talking to his dad um because i was helping helping their dad mom and dad buy a house after i'd helped them with the house and he had completely killed his yard it was just infested with weeds and his dad was telling him he didn't use the pre-emergence that i told him to use he didn't do that he didn't do this and i was just cracking up laughing um, cause I just remembered how excited he was to cut the grass and then it turned into, it was his mortal enemy at that point. So, um, but yeah, um, step three is a more fun step and this involves everyone in the house. Uh, the needs, the wants, the deal breakers, you know, involve the, the spouse or the partner, involve the kids. 
because when you're a child, it's, it's tough moving, you know, you're leaving your friends in a lot of cases. Um, you're starting new, you don't know anyone, uh, when you go to your new school. So getting to sit down with your kids and talking to them, Hey, I know it's going to be tough, but what do you want in a home? What do you want your bedroom to have? What do you want? What do you like? Um, and sometimes it's, it's nothing that you weren't already ha that you didn't already have in mind. Like, um, maybe they want a bigger closet. Maybe they want a game room May it's like in that, the first house that we saw the game room could be that loft. Um, there's bigger rooms, you know, how about we get you a bigger room? How about we get you a backyard? You know, whatever, let's get you a dog, <laughs> whatever it takes. Like the, this house that we're getting to here in a second, you'll see it's going to be magic. You see right now it's got a back deck and let's see what happens to it when we open this door and magically it's a, on a concrete patio with a fenced in backyard. And now we can get you a dog. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, whatever we can do to get everyone excited, because I have, especially when I was a newer agent, um, this is something that I started to bring into because uh, when I was a newer agent, um, I had some folks and they were getting a really nice home, but uh, we ended up terminating because the kids came into the home, the daughters came into the bedroom one night and they, um, they told uh, the parents, my buyers, uh, they were crying, telling them, we don't want to move. We we were scared. We don't want to leave our friends. So we terminated. And I didn't argue with them because that's what it, an agent does. I talked to them. Um, and then we came to the, to the realization that their best in their best interest, it was to stay where they were. And that's what I do. You know, I'm not fighting for you to keep a home. I'm fighting for what you want. If you want the home, but there's certain things that we've got to go come across, then I'm here to help you get through those things. Sometimes um, I'm just here as someone to listen and to give you my advice, to give you my experience, to let you know where they're at, um, and, and where we're at with things. So, um, that's, that's part of the excitement too, and some of the stress of buying a home. And that's why you use an agent. Um, but yeah, once you have your needs, your wants and your deal breakers, next you find your area. And what I mean by that is you find, find the location that you're looking for. In the reason why I make you choose now at this point and not sooner is because you need to know your budget and you need to know how much of a home you need. If you need a four bedroom home, but your budget's only $300,000, you're not going to get a home in Johns Creek, for example, uh, that's, that's a new home. You're going to get a fixer upper for 300, four bedroom, uh, whatever large big house or whatever you need, but Sometimes it's better to get to check more boxes on a house and maybe you got to drive an extra 15, 20 minutes, but you get more house out of, out of it. You get the house that you want and it's, it's worth that little bit of extra drive. I talk to people all the time and they tell me, well, if I find the right house, then I'll be willing to make the drive. And that's what it's all about. Finding the right house to make it worth it. Now, um, it's not worth it if you're too far away and your house stinks and then you're really gonna be unhappy. But that's why we put this now, because, okay, I know that you need this. I know you need that. Check it, figure out everything that you need. I know your budget, because we already got you pre-approved. Now, let's figure out the areas that work best for you. And that's why I put that here. Um, so, yeah, we can have an idea of where we need to be area-wise, but I specifically put this here at this point to create what the workable plan. If we put this at the very beginning and you tell me that you want to live in Johns Creek and your budget is $200,000 or Coweta, like Sonoya, for example, where the average price point in Sonoya is, all, is around $500,000, but you tell me your budget is 200 and you need a five bedroom home. That's not a workable plan. Let's get you to an area that we can make it work. Let's get you to Fairburn. Let's get you to LaGrange, let's get, let's get you to Griffin. Places where we can get what you need to check the boxes that you need to create that workable plan. Uh, so we've got just a quick recap. I'm, I know I'm recapping a lot, but first hire a full-time agent, then get pre-approved, then determine your needs, your wants and your deal breakers, 
then you determine your area and then the last thing that you have to do when buying a home in the first five steps step number five is starting to go look at homes <laughs> that's part a part a is you finally get to start looking at homes and part b is save 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 you know that you have a down payment in a lot of cases unless you're a va or a usda va is a veterans loan USDA is a rural development loan. Uh, there are some other cases out there as well, but those are 100% loans. Um, so you don't need a down payment, but people don't always tell you that you also need to save up for a home inspection. You also need to save up for an appraisal. You also have closing costs, all these extra things that aren't your down payment. So that's why you save. I've got all those people, I got inspectors for you whenever the time comes for a home inspection. We'll talk about that another time, why you need a home inspection. Um, we'll talk about a bunch of others, the, all the post going under contract stuff, but this is all just to start looking at homes. Um, but notice where I put finally getting to start to look at homes as step five, because you don't want to be looking at homes that you can't, that, that aren't the homes for you. Like, if you think that you have an $800,000 budget, but your budget's only $600,000, well, now you've got the taste of what an $800,000 house is, and a $600,000 house in that same area is not gonna be the same. So then you're you're gonna be feeling like you're settling. So it's it's kind of one of those things, it's, it, it's the opposite of it's better to love and loss than never loved at all. It's the exact opposite of that in real estate. You can have dreams, you can have ambitions, but we want to make sure that you are set up for a workable plan and you falling in love with an $800,000 house and it turns out you can only get a $600,000 house, then you know that's not a workable plan at all. Um, it, comes, it comes down to a lot of different stuff, but those are the main first five steps. So now that you've got just a taste of Riverbend Overlook in Fayetteville, Georgia by DRB, are you ready to consider making a move here? I'll be happy to get you from where you are to where you wanna be. So reach out to me today. My contact information is below and in the description, so reach out anytime. Remember, I come out with new videos every single week with exclusive Atlanta community tours and everything you need to know when buying a home in Georgia. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that like button, and be sure to leave a comment on where you'd like to see me next.